Welcome, I'm super pumped about this project. This might not be the world's best watch, but it might be the best watch designed and built in a kitchen. This is my second metal 3D printed watch. And for the first one, I compared a bunch of different like technologies used to 3D print metal. And after all that comparison, I just went with the cheapest one, which was Binder Jet. But now I'm back with a much more intricate, complicated design. And thanks to a partnership with Proto Labs, I have it printed in a couple different materials using direct metal laser sintering. So I'm gonna talk about the design process and we're gonna have a material comparison between titanium, aluminum, steel, and cobalt chrome DMLS prints. <laughs> Going into this build, I knew I wanted to focus on the dial because my first build had an interesting case, but a fairly plain enamel dial. I also knew that I wanted a 40 millimeter case and a domed crystal to match the on wrist feel of something like an Oris big crank. This was my first idea and you can see I take this initial dial and then I just go crazy with it. The dial is as deep as the watch itself. And this is because I noticed that the dome crystals have a magnifying effect. And this inspired me to create an optical illusion and make a dial that actually looks deeper than the watch is thick. I start out a little too crazy, then I try this simpler design which my cousins say looks like a birth control pill dispenser. And finally I land on this design which I like because it has these arches which remind me of the lugs of my past design. So I'm trying to develop like my own visual style here by reusing certain design elements in different ways. And I also like this design because it's a unibody case dial combo which I know has been done before, Zinn did one, but it's really underutilized in the watch world. It's so cool to just have a single monoblock piece. So this design is very intricate. It's almost like a 3D printing stress test in a way. Uh, but shout out to Eric, who's the engineer at Proto Labs. We went back and forth, tweaked the design a little bit, and were able to get it to work with their machines. So let's take a look at each of these prints under a macro lens. First up is titanium in their standard resolution. I really like how this came out. The overhangs are clean. You can see this gap between the arch and the watch stem housing is preserved. There's still that gap there. And really the only downside to this is the difficulty of machining this after it's printed. Next up is cobalt chrome, which on first glance looks a little bit rougher. You can see that the gap between the watch stem housing and that indicator actually did close up, which it wasn't supposed to. But the advantage of this stuff is it's highly reflective when polished. So you can see that bottom one's rough, but the one right above it, it's polished and it looks a lot better. Next is aluminum. And this is my personal favorite, maybe not for building a watch out of, but just in terms of seeing how the print turned out. There's not a lot of volume here. And combined with the low density material, it just feels like there's no way it could be made from metal. It kind of breaks your brain. The overhangs were definitely worse, but the details were almost as good as the titanium. It definitely is more surface texture than the other metals, but it's super easy to machine because it's aluminum. So if you needed a planar surface, you could do that after the fact. And then finally, we have stainless steel 17.4. They do have another stainless steel, uh, 316L that you can print with, but this one has slightly better overhang performance. Overall, this looks very similar to the cobalt chrome print to me, just slightly better details. And none of these have any detectable warpage, so warping was an issue with my past watch build and is not going to be a problem here. I've decided to start with the cobalt chrome print because I'm excited about the polishing options. And I think that having a polished case but a rough finished dial will create a nice contrast. <laughs> I start off with several hours of polishing, starting with a grinding wheel, then a rubber polishing wheel, and then polishing pads. Next, I design this retaining ring for the movement. So the movement pops in, and then I cut the watch stem to the correct length. And now that I've test fit that the crown works and the watch stem is the right length, I take it out, add a little super glue, and then re-thread the crown on. And then I've got these absolutely minuscule O-rings that fit over the watch stem, this watch will not be waterproof, but it's better than nothing. During this time, I just laid the hands down to see what they looked like and realized they needed more contrast. So I used this red enamel and I dip the tip of the hand in the enamel. I've always been a fan of things that are monochrome with just a single accent color. I don't want to take away from the form of the dial by adding too much color, but this definitely is the right call for readability. And then after that, I install the hands. I did practice a couple times before doing it with the final set of hands, uh, but you'll see somehow I still managed to scratch them. I am getting better, but I'm not good at this yet. Oh, and the tape that I'm using to hold the hand in place pulls the enamel off. I paint it back on and lesson learned, dipping the hands results in a nice clean finish, painting them not so much. Then next I install the crystal. This is an acrylic crystal, so it's slightly flexible, which means you can compress it with this tool 
fit it in place, and then when you release the tool, it expands to perfectly set into the case. The downside of an acrylic crystal is that it's scratchable. The upside is that if it does scratch, it can pretty easily buff the scratches out, and it's got this like retro, almost Jetsons vibe to it that I really like. And it's also easy to remove, which is important for this monoblock design where it's assembled from the bottom up, unlike a traditional watch. And for the strap of this cobalt chrome version, I'm going with burgundy. 3D printing was to be a revolution, to change everything. An entire market of data-only products would be born. Product lines would expand to hundreds of SKUs, catering to every taste. Like many tech revolutions, the transition from hype to application took longer than the public's attention. And long after the limelight shifted from virtual reality to Internet of Things and on to NFTs, progress in the world of 3D printing trudged on. Less flashy but more realistic applications were born. Cadillac's latest electric sedan has over 100 3D printed parts. Boeing's latest passenger jet has over 300 printed parts. And today this progress is on display in this, a watch. This watch represents a future that could have been. An alternate timeline where 3D printing is not hidden under the skin used purely for its structural or mass advantages, but instead on full display. Whether or not that is a good thing, well, that will come down to the individual. Let's get the elephant out of the room first. This is a one-off prototype. It has been built by, well, me. Someone who has no experience building watches, nor background in industrial design, nor proper tools. This becomes particularly apparent when looking at the watch hands. Here we have scratches, poorly painted indices, and looking at the aluminum version, well, that is just disappointing. It also becomes apparent when you flip the watch over. Here we have what appears to be a leather sticker. But for all the hand built in a kitchen jank, there may, just may, be something here. Sometimes when a novice enters a field, they stumble upon something unique. It could be just their set of fresh eyes, but more likely it's just pure ignorance as to the proper way of doing things. The first Saab, whose body was stamped from a single sheet of metal and was designed by a team of engineers, many of whom didn't have a driver's license, comes to mind. But in a world of established brands endlessly re-spinning their old designs with a new material here or a new color there, and startup brands repackaging the same Chinese cases with the same minimalistic dials and artisanal marketing campaigns, something like this feels, well, refreshing. In a way, it's an oddity. The titanium and aluminum versions feel as light as the SD card this footage is being recorded to. The dial depth may have necessitated a quartz movement, but it gives the watch a look unlike any other. The minute and hour markers flow towards each other down into the abyss where they anchor to the watch's back surface. Some may find the barren plateau center which houses the movement to be a bit boring. And I would agree. However, the rest of the watch is thoroughly busy, so additional ornamentation might disrupt this balance. So it's not perfect, but I am pretty pleased with it. This shows that you can jump into a brand new field. You can take something that's existed for hundreds of years and just redesign your own. So in the end, I'm just really excited about like the delta between the first watch I built and the second one. The trend line is going in the right direction. Shout out again to Proto Labs for helping me with this and have a good day.